So the cost of some super shoes are astronomical, but there are some that are far more affordable and far more readily available for the general public. But the question always is, are they worth the money or is your money better spent elsewhere? Well, hopefully with today's video, I'll be going some way to answering that question. What is up guys, Andy Forestine Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today we're looking at the Next% Percent version two after 200 miles and then comparing it to a brand new pair So my goal for today's video is to showcase the Next% Percent version 2 after 200 miles, talk to you about the wear and tear, how I've been using it, if I'll be using it moving forward, the usual long-term shoe review stuff. But at the end, I want to throw in a comparison to a new pair so that you guys have a visual comparison as to how a shoe after 200 miles looks compared to one that is brand new. I just feel like visually it's gonna give a better picture for you guys and you'll be able to see the pros and the cons, how it's wearing down, how it's holding up and hopefully help you make a better decision as to if you want to invest in super shoes or not. So if you're excited for today's video guys make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and we'll start with the wear and tear. So despite this shoe being pretty darn dirty, it's holding up really well in terms of the wear and tear. There is some outsole wear that I need to show you, but we'll start with the upper first. So in terms of the upper, it's holding up really well. One of the things that I was questioning when the version two came out with this new upper, because I actually was a fan of the Vaporweave. I know a lot of people weren't. They felt it was maybe a bit too restrictive. It didn't like that plasticky feel. I felt it was really good for me. It kept my foot locked in really, really nicely. So when I saw this and tested it out, I did wonder if there'll be any stretching issues over time, any fraying, any snagging, anything like that, but nothing at all. So really, really happy with that. There is starting to get some extra crinkles in the midsole that wasn't there before. Obviously, we'll do a visual comparison with the new version when we get there. But in terms of how the midsole actually feels, it still feels really good, really bouncy. I think I've got to say, like, if someone said you have to race in this shoe, I wouldn't be like, oh no, I've got 200 and something miles in this shoe. It's not going to be the best option I have. I'd be like, okay, if I have to, I'll race in it. It still feels really good and I'm still in training and we'll come to this shortly with how I've been using it, getting the most out of this shoe. In terms of the wear on the bottom, I think the visual thing here, uh, there is a bit of wear just slightly on the outsole, uh, outside rubber piece there as I get sloppy and I heel strike uh, and I sit back in the hips. But on the whole, the toe off area is where I'm starting to notice quite a bit of uh, wear and tear. So you'll see, on this one in particular we've worn right through to the midsole there again it's in an area which isn't going to have much impact it's not kind of right here where it's going to impact the grip it's just where I'm towing off and it's just wearing through. So this whole top end here where the rubber is looks and feels slightly thinner is wearing through. It's the same on the other shoe. I haven't quite got a bold patch like here, but it is almost there. Uh, so there is a kind of a mirror image on both of the shoes with that section. But on the whole, this main section of rubber is seems to be holding up well. You can see some stone indents and you can see where some of the gravel's gone into the shoe. But on the whole, I've got to say after 218 or 217 miles, it's holding up pretty darn well. So how have I been using this shoe to get it to 217 miles? Well, it's predominantly been a training shoe. I've done a couple of races in it and then it got relegated to a training shoe. So I'm not going to go into the whole debate and preference of version one to version two. I prefer version one of this shoe. It's as simple as that. I did find that the foam feels slightly more plasticky, a little bit sort of not cheaper necessarily, but certainly less responsive in this shoe. I still get great results from the Next% Percent 2 and I've had some brilliant results uh, and PBs in the Next% Percent 2 in different colorways of this shoe and different versions but this particular pair I was going through a bit of a rough patch with training at the time when I got this shoe over a year ago and uh, I had a couple of negative races in it and I think that kind of negative mindset just kind of made me put the shoe down and I went back to some other racing shoes and I never really decided to pick it back up again for racing so what I did was I thought it would be a waste to just sit there and not racing it I'll use it for training periodically I've actually used it more for training in this recent recent 
marathon training block just because I've been doing longer miles I wanted a little bit more uh, comfort cushion and a little bit more responsiveness on some of the workouts I've been doing so I have uh, gravitated towards this shoe quite a lot it's had about four five or six runs during this training block so it's been quite a staple uh, over the last few weeks but in general it's just been periodically used over the last year and a few months whenever I got it I think it was April last year so in terms of that, it's mainly been used for long runs, uh, long run workouts and speed workouts. It's not been used for easy and moderate runs, but mainly the faster turnover work, anything that's going to require a fair chunk of mileage and anything that's going to require a fair bit of speed, I have used this shoe for and I have absolutely loved it. So the question is, will I continue to use this shoe moving forwards? And before we get into the comparison of this versus the new version, let me answer this question. And that answer is yes, I'm going to continue to use it. This has got plenty of life left in it. The only thing that I'm slightly concerned about is the grip on this shoe. And you'll see a visual uh, comparison very, very shortly. So what I found with the Vaporfly version one was when it kind of hit 200 miles, you have a nice shine and quite a tackiness of this grip on these next percents. Well, that goes in and around the 200 mile mark. You can see it's quite, um, quite what I would class as a matte finish now, whereas there's more of a gloss finish on the uh, on the new version. And with my version ones, I took it out for a test run around 200 miles to see if I still felt I could race in it. And I slipped and slid quite a bit when I was doing some U-turns on some workouts going up and down the same stretch. And it did not fill me with confidence. I also hit the deck in a race going around a corner in my version ones. Uh, they just completely wiped out from underneath me. And that basically made me lose confidence in the shoe. So I've just not used that one ever again. And I do wonder at what point I'm going to feel like this with this shoe. I think if anything happens to this shoe to make me want to retire it, that's going to be the reason because the midsole still feels great, the upper feels great, the ride is still good. And I genuinely feel like this shoe can continue going as it is for another 100, 200, maybe even 300 miles. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing could get well up and over the 400 mile mark. So yes, I'll continue to use it until I feel like I've lost confidence in the grip or something else happens to the shoe. And finally, let's give you a bit more of a visual representation between the old version and the new version here. So naturally, you're going to see this one is a heck of a lot more shiny, a lot more white and uh, a little less dirty. But the two areas that I really want to showcase is the midsole and the outsole, because the upper pretty much is the upper. There's really no difference. By the fact that this is dirty and this is clean, uh, the upper is still really, really good. The padding and everything in the back of the shoes still look great there's no issues there whatsoever so it's mainly the midsole and the outsole now you'll notice with this shoe zoom x feature is the fact that it can be quite crinkly when you buy it it's just a thing and actually it's one of the distinguishments you look for when you're actually buying nike shoes i've heard a lot of people end up buying from third-party websites and they end up being fake um, and one of the big telltale signs is that the Zoom X looks super, super clean and no crinkles whatsoever. You know it's fake when there's that. So this is a brand new pair. And you can see down the midsole here, there's lots of crinkle lines, especially around the back. Here's a great example here. Coming up the back here, you can see that there's a lot of crinkles and creases. But this is a new pair and this is how it looks. Now, when you look at the old pair, you'll see, especially on the inside here, you'll see a fair few more of these crinkles along here. They, these are and have been made by me putting the use in them. So these aren't what you would expect from a new shoe. You can see that there are some, uh, some more heavier, thicker creases there. But on the whole, as I said, I just have to clarify, despite visually it looking more creased and crinkled, it still pops really, really nicely. I wouldn't say that it's lost particularly much pop whatsoever. I still feel lively and bouncy in this shoe. So that's one visual that you can see. Uh, and then the outsole, let's talk about that matte finish and that gloss finish. You can see exactly what I mean. This new shoe, it feels tacky. It's got a tacky kind of sheen to it. And that's kind of that confidence grip that I was talking about earlier. 
you see this has completely lost that now so this is a heck of a lot smoother and a heck of a lot uh, more dented in there but on the whole I just feel visually that gives it a much better example for you to see what I mean after 200 miles so and the heels there as you can see the rubber on this one is is looking a heck of a lot thicker than this one here but again that's just down to general wear and tear use so as I just said and I will reiterate I feel like if I have to retire this shoe it's going to be down to lack of grip and lack of grip only that I think at this stage with 270 miles in them they're still running really really nicely so it's just going to be a case of when I feel I lose confidence in the shoe or when I start to slip and slide a little bit more or when I hit the deck or one of the two I'm not going to be using it again before London but I will continue to use it after London and we'll see when that point comes but hopefully visually that gives you a really good idea from a new pair to a 217 mile pair so there we go that's the Nike Next Percent version 2 after 200 miles and a quick visual comparison there of a new pair. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic because I'm really glad I've managed to, to, to produce a long-term review on this shoe and get it over 200 miles but I think as I said in the beginning the question is are they worth the money and this answers the question for me. Yeah they're well worth the money especially the Next Percents when you can get them at such a reduced price. There's always seems to be seasonal discounts at some point you can get them well over under 200 pounds. I've seen some people pick them up for 140, 150, 160 pounds and I just feel that's such a great investment when they're done with racing use them for training I still feel like they've got so much life left in them I genuinely feel like if the grip hangs on in this shoe then three four hundred miles is not going to be out of the question and I think it will continue to work really really well but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below do drop a comment below let me know the biggest mileage you've got in your next percent version 2 did the grip go on yours or was it something else that made your sh you decide to retire your shoe let me know let's get that discussion going down in the comments if you enjoyed today's video guys please do give it a like share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always i'll see you on the next one until then